console generation of the Xbox Series S and S or S and S X and X and PS5. And now apparently the PlayStation 5, 5, 5 Pro has been leaked by third parties. And this console, there's just some stuff to talk about with it. Like, is it going to be significantly a big improvement? Is it worth it? How many people voted and said, like, it's worth it to me to buy it kind of a thing? And what if there isn't necessarily a competition that is go around and it's just kind of left to be? So there's a lot to dive into. And I had a guest for this. And unfortunately, he couldn't make it for very understandable reasons. So it's just going to be a solo show. And we're going to basically discuss what the PS5 specs mean. And I don't want to say on like a technical level, by the way. We're not talking about like a technical, I'm not a technical guy. You know, we're not going to just be talking about what the what the CUs and flops and all that stuff do. But there is some details in it that I think is kind of, how much does it matter? And... I think the first point that I want to bring up that I'm really curious if anybody and their mother cares about this. And maybe I could even grab the box here. Let me grab the box because I think I can show this. <laughs> that I'm pretty sure you already know where I'm going with this. So I hold on to uh, the boxes for my consoles or whatever. And this is the PlayStation 5. Okay. And the PlayStation 5, where is it on the box? It's somewhere on here. I'm not lying. Or maybe my box doesn't have it. Holy Toledo, my box doesn't have it. <laughs> maybe they knew. They knew, like, wait. <laughs> we got to stop printing this. But I could have swore a lot of these boxes had on it, you know. Wow, I'm very bummed out. I was planning to literally show this. But I know a lot of people have on their box that... Get ready for 8K gaming. You know, get ready for 8K. Get ready for 4K 120. And we haven't been able to do that for like any games. There's a few selections. But for the most part, we're pretty much just gaming at like 4K 30 frames, Jedi Survivor. And uh, maybe like 1080p 120. But it's not the promised 4K 60 frames that we have that this whole generation was built up on. And if this is the console to do it, then is that a little bit of a letdown? I ask you that. And I have a poll that I asked everybody as well. I kind of gathered the results. I have like around almost 300 people that voted on it. But I asked the community, if this PS5 Pro is real and it's supposed to be launching potentially this like holiday or the, basically the last quarter of the season, this year, last quarter of the season, <laughs> last quarter this year, would you buy it? And I'm trying to look at the results of my poll, but unfortunately it's not showing. Come on, baby. Here we go. Yeah, so the results of this poll that I put up, there's 244 votes, and I asked... Would you buy a mid-gen refresh for PlayStation or Xbox this gen? Just either or. And 244 people say 75%. No, I'm okay with what I got till next gen. <laughs> 75% regardless if you're PlayStation or Xbox. And I'm curious if you're watching in the chat what you think of it. Like MuseStore says, AK is on the right is on the right top on the front. Maybe I'm covering it. Because, yeah, like, that's a legitimate thing that's on the box, but I, uh, I might be covering it. Nope. It's not on mine. It's not on mine, but I know that's on a lot of people's boxes. So, whoops. But, Nike, so there's a PS5 Pro coming out? Yeah. So, if you, so if you have no idea, basically, the context to this is... Um, there was a YouTuber that was going through some documents. I don't remember where the documents exactly come from, but IGN and Inside Gaming have kind of, let's just say, proofread it and kind of confirmed with sources that like this is a document that legitimately came from Sony Interactive Entertainment. 
It's like legitimately from Sony Interactive Entertainment. So it's not a ruse. It's apparently like legit, which is why I don't like to talk about like leaks, rumors, reports, unless just for the sake of conversation. But this actually has backing that is literally from Sony Interactive Entertainment. So it's a real thing that's essentially labeled Project Trinity. And Project Trinity, the long and short of it, is that it's not going to have much better of a CPU, and keep that in mind, because that's really important. But it's going to have a lot more um, the teraflops, which was like the fancy-pantsy word that a lot of people were kind of basing which console's more powerful off of, which teraflops, if you don't know, that's like the graphics card and how much it can render um you know the 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 vis the especially the resolution i would say especially the resolution frame rate that's how well it can render the game but it, the cpu is what helps simulate the game keep that in mind okay to, like i want to keep this on a basic level with you i don't know if you're a tech nerd if you are let us know in the chat but the teraflops on this thing <laughs> compared to the playstation 5 which was like 10.23 is 33.5 three times what the base ps5 model is but everything else is pretty much the same 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 ram same amount of memory for games and it's going to have the same hard drive i think the other difference to know is that uh it seems like it's going to come with a it's not going to include a disk drive it seems like really we are leaning into this all digital era, but still having that option. If you want the physical disk drive, you could buy that separately. And I think that's their way of keeping this thing as cost efficient as they can, because it's probably going to be priced around $600, if not more. And with that, another one more comparison, as I saw like way back in the day, we used to see this during the whole you know build up to next gen. PlayStation 5 versus the Xbox Series X as like powerhouses and so on. And the Series X was like a bit more powerful, had a bit more, it had a bit more teraflops. The CPU was pretty much just a little bit over. And now this new PS5 CPU, by the way, it's going to be just about the same as the Series X one, which is why, again, the CPU is really important. Because there's reports from Digital Foundry, the the, the guy that runs digital foundry the founder he was saying like if this thing exists gta 6 is probably going to run at like 30 frames per second because it'll probably be like 1080p on the ps5 and maybe 4k on the pro so it's not going to be that big of a difference so i ask you first question does this mean much to you because I think if somebody did not have a PS5 up to this point, if you did not have a PS5 up to this point, then this may be enticing. This might be really enticing. But Nike says, I think a few people are interested in getting the Pro, but people are content with the current PS5. People are mostly waiting the Switch too. Yeah, the Switch 2 is a totally different conversation because, yeah, everybody's waiting for that. But but Nike Boy brings up a point that I want to shout out another patron that sent, he was the first person to send in something uh, to this, which, by the way, if you're a patron, feel free to, uh, we're kind of troubleshooting something that I want to incorporate with the public soon, where we can all send in voice messages to kind of be on live streams or videos. But Air Ninja, who's a patron, said, sorry, I'm unable to send a voice message, but... My main take is regardless of how powerful this console can be, which it's not too much more powerful except the graphics card, it's completely pointless. Unless someone has the TV or monitor to support those graphical upgrades, it's pointless. Even the supposedly AI generation graphical upgrades, which I forgot to mention, that is another part of this where they're using certain technology to up-res a lot of older titles. So if you want your PS like your base PS5 titles that's been around for a while to be up -res, this system will be able to do that really well. It seems like a gimmick I can't even see Sony pulling off. And the, the bold words here is it's completely pointless. 
And I don't think I agree with that. And the reason I say that is because I don't, I don't think it serves too much of a point. But what it does serve is the opportunity to sell more hardware, which is what Sony is really about. Sony is a hardware company. Like Microsoft is a software company. Nintendo is a game slash toys company. Sony, at the end of the day, is a hardware company. They sell great cameras. They sell great televisions. They sell great hardware. And this is a way which back, which if anybody's been paying attention a bit ago, there was statements saying like, yeah, the PlayStation 5 is in the, the back half of its life cycle or it's about to enter the back half of its life cycle. I want to bring up a fun fact. I want to bring up a fun fact that I'm very curious on what you think of this. Uh, so the PS4 Pro, do you remember when this released? It was November 10th, 2016. Which, November 10, 2016, was three years after the PS4 launched. It was three years. So, if the PS5 Pro exists, this would be four years later. And the PS4 Pro, what? We didn't get to the PS5 until another four years after that. So they released this thing before even the halfway point. They released it before the halfway point of the PS4. And there's other documents from the FTC stuff, like the whole trial that, if you care about it, it doesn't matter. This is important. During the FTC trial that Microsoft was trying to get Activision Blizzard, they were saying that the PS the, the PS6 era, the, the next gen for PlayStation, is looking to be in 2028. So if this comes out at the end of this year, it marks the halfway point for PlayStation. Now, this is the kicker. Competition makes us, the consumers, get great deals great opportunities, and blah, blah, blah. Xbox said on their recent podcast that they intend to, to have some kind of hardware news this holiday. There's something. They, are, they also stated in that we have like the biggest hardware jump in next gen that's ever happened. You know, like, like the biggest hardware gap that's ever been in the next gen jump. That's what they're stating. Now, let's see if they pull that off. But it doesn't seem like they are doing that first. There's some other hardware that they're revealing this holiday season. There's a lot of rumors that the next Xbox next gen is going to be in 2026. That's what a couple insiders were saying, that they are planning for it, for their next gen to be in 2026. If this PS5 Pro comes out at the end of this year and Xbox doesn't combat it but keeps doing their thing of, oh, just play on PC, whatever, cloud, console, we got something for you. <laughs> but PlayStation owns the hardware of, like, this is the most powerful system and they're going to do that unopposed. I wonder what's going to happen in 2026 if we have a repeat of the Xbox 360. Because that came out over a year before the PlayStation 3. And look what happened. That came out a year before the PlayStation 3. And look what happened. That was like the closest race that there has been. And I wonder if they get that same head start, what happens? And a two-year head start, if that. That's a question I ask you. Flex your thoughts. Flex your thoughts, live chat, comments. Because that, that is a big bone that's... Let me pull out my thinking stick. Let me pull out my thinking stick. 
By the way, I know the camera is like choppy and off colored. It's I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing to connect appropriately to my live stream software. But what does that mean? <laughs> I'm curious what you think about the PS5 specs. They're pretty much just a 10% better GPU or CPU. Sorry, it's pretty much the same CPU, same everything, just a lot better graphics card. So it'll probably render things if there's a game that does like uh, 1080p 60 frame it'll probably have a 4k 60 frame you know it'll be like a next step up maybe but the frame rate will be the same it's the resolution that'll change and this being a literal halfway point for playstation and what do they do for the next four years and what if you know xbox really does do their next gen two years before playstation like that's a much more far off topic but those are the things I especially wanted to get people's like takes on. But yeah, earlier Aaron Ninja said like it's so bloody pointless with our current gen and TV. Yeah, there's no, there's no. We, do you own an 8K TV? Do you bother with 8K? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't care too much about anything above 4K 60 frame. I really don't. If something does 4K 60, I am a happy camper. If it does 4K 30. I'm fine. If it does 1440p or 1080p 60, I'm fine. <laughs> but if it's a really high fidelity graphic game, then I would like it to be like top notch. But I, maybe that's really hard to do. Um, Nike Boy seems like they're trying their best to test out new software for the new system. Mew, I have just read that the Pro will uh re. Why is this heart always covering people's chat messages? Um. The Pro will re something with 4K 120 and 8K 60. Um, there it is. Reach with 4K 120. Um, and that's another debate. That's another debate is like, why was that printed on these boxes? That was the big promise of next gen is like, are we literally having to do a refresh to reach that? That's a little bit. That's that's a little bit me. Just me. I think personally, um, Supertone, I wouldn't notice enough of a difference to bother upgrading. That's and that's the big question, you know. That's why, like, two over two hundred people voted. Seventy five percent said no. I wouldn't bother buying this. I wouldn't bother buying a mid mid gen refresh, whether it was Xbox or PlayStation, because it just feels like we haven't even reached the promise of that hardware. That's a situation. We haven't reached the promise of that hardware. <laughs> so that, that's why I think this is a really powerful conversation because if we haven't reached the promise of that hardware, <laughs> it's it's like, like, I think a lot of people were kind of bummed out when the first Spider-Man game that they said we have like three episodes of DLC to sell you before the game even came out. Before the game even came out. <laughs> And I think a lot of people were kind of like miffed by that. Just like, I don't like that. <laughs> and I think that's what this feels like. You know, it's like if we haven't really reached that consistent promise of 4K60 with just these base boxes that you told us, why would we, are we basically having to buy this box to actually get that promise? I'm not saying that's how you should feel. I'm just saying I understand how a lot of people feel that way. Like me personally, you guys know I'm an Xbox guy, but I am like super content with my PS5 standard model with a disk drive and my Series X. I am super content with those because they play everything just fine in my opinion. Um, and I see like Rue here in the chat who I saw in our community tab. He brought up like if GTA 6 runs on this PS5 Pro at 60 frame then I'll be tempted <laughs> because that's another side. Like the other side of the coin is people just want whatever's the highest fidelity. And that's another part of this equation. Some people are going to only, some people are going to cater to this because they want, regardless of the system, they just want whatever box can play their games best. That was, that was the initial, that was one of the five initial reasons I got a series X. I did a video about that. That was one of my five reasons is because technically this thing is more powerful than the base PS5. And I want to be able to play all the third-party games in the best way possible. But now this is a box that's going to be able to do that. So 
that's another side of this coin. Mew, AK was clearly on Spider-Man 2's box. <laughs> no, it wasn't, but... <laughs> Um, oh, but there is another thing that I didn't mention. Um, there is another thing that I think is very uh, important to bring up with this thing that I think is something that we just, another promise that we didn't exactly get shown, but it was uh, a promise that I think was really cool. Ray tracing. Uh, I Basically, this PS5 Pro is supposedly going to be able to do ray tracing like two to four times faster than the base PS5. That's cool. I think if anything, ray tracing is, in my opinion, the the bigger like flash word of next gen that we didn't get to see. We're almost four years into it now. We're more than three years into it now. And I feel like there's not too many games that have done ray tracing super well. I look at Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I think that game did it great. Um, the, uh, the newest Forza Motorsport. I think that game does it really good. Uh... I think Spider-Man, Spider-Man 1 and 2, I think did pretty good options with ray tracing. But we still haven't seen like the Minecraft update for console to do that does ray tracing. <laughs> There's a lot of things that ray tracing is something that like we just haven't gotten. I think Halo Infinite was supposed to have it too and then it incorporated it, but not exactly in the way we wanted. But ray tracing is a feature that like we haven't been able to do. So this idea that maybe, just maybe, the PS5 Pro can do it. Again, it sucks that we were promised that and maybe we don't get it unless we buy this other box. <laughs> Mew, I swear it's on the box. It's got yellow text. Well, maybe, but <laughs> even so, even if things like reach this, like let's just say hypothetically, somebody cares about this a lot and they buy this box and do they have the right TV to run it? It's like Ninja said, do they have the right TV to run it? If you buy the right TV to run it, that TV is going to cost you like, I don't know, two or three grand minimum. <laughs> but I, I leave this open to you. And I like originally I intended this to be kind of a back and forth conversation between uh, me and another tech tuber, Rudy, which he's not on here right now, but I'll just shout him out. Look up Baldy Rudy. He's doing some great uh just content like he is playing he's trying out so many tech just portable devices especially if you like portable gaming um and i wanted to have this back and forth about it with him because i think a tech person would really be interested in this this situation but i think on the consumer level the whole gen and competition part is the most like interesting if this PS5 Pro goes unchallenged for two years, maybe even four. <laughs> I don't think that'll happen. But um, if it goes unchallenged for two years as the most powerful box, I'm very curious if people, even if Xbox does like a next gen two years earlier than PlayStation 6, you know, let's just say next gen Xbox is 2026 and next gen PlayStation is 2028. I'm really curious if it'll matter much when the PS5 Pro has been out for the two years before that. It's a really interesting situation we haven't seen. And I think that's the part that like, I would love to back and forth with people as you flex your speculation. But I'm trying to incorporate that phrase. <laughs> um, but because I'm not doing a back and forth, I want to kind of just leave this as a potential replay. And just see what people think in the comments. See what you think. New, I went for a QLED OLED because Sony didn't uh, get 8K OLED TVs. I don't think, I don't think they had that either. But I think you're saying Q, you're saying QD OLED. But I'm assuming you mean QLED. I don't know, but um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm very curious when this gets announced, you know, because um, Xbox, uh, they're announcing something in the holiday this year. And uh, if this if this PlayStation 5 Pro model happens, I would imagine they're going to announce it during the summer, you know, because they want to build it up for a little bit. But we'll see. I would imagine they would want it out before GTA 6, because if this exists before GTA 6, 
then that is going to be the system that people like they're going to gravitate to PlayStation to be able to play it on either the base model or the super duper fancy pantsy model. And that's going to be that's going to be a big thing. <laughs> so that, it, even if it's not exclusive, like people are just going to go to that. So I leave it at that, you know, and I, I, I I'm going to just kind of relax after the stream, man, because I. I put on Instagram, I've had like this weird chest tightness for like the last couple hours. So I'm just going to relax. But if you watch this replay, let me know what you think. And this is an incredibly short live stream, but I just wanted to keep it focused on this issue and see what you think. Let us, let us know. Flex your thoughts and comments. I think that's pretty much it. <laughs>